we going to start tearing the D9 down today. Put a derby charger on it. Freaking mice in here. Yeah. Got the disgusting starlings outside and mice in my tractor. Contact! And go get some liquid wrench. <sighs> These all should have anesthes on them, so they really shouldn't be too bad. <clears throat> oh no! God, I hate that. <sighs> I'll just get another one, a longer one. <laughs> I just can't forget I left, left that down in there. I can see it. I'm going to have to get a magnet. Mechanical fingers. <coughs> I don't think I'll keep these. I don't know. Might reuse them. What the hell? Clean them off or use them. They're going to come off again anyhow. <sighs> Okay, these ones inside are gonna be a bear. I can see that. Okay, that one probably twist off. Pretty bit. That's gonna twist off. Yeah, she gonna twist. She twisted off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We're out. Come on, baby. Come on. You can do her. Come. There we go. One turbo charger off. Okay. We need to take it off and clean it out. Looks like she's pumping a little oil. All right. Woohoo! Do the back one first, then you'll get caught in the groove. That's using your head, Jeff. Isn't it? Using your head, buddy. Okay, now I gotta get some mechanics solvent, ether, something. Clean all this hoopy doo up. And then when I put the switchblade on, I think what I'm gonna do is separate. The housing because on the newer style housing is so much easier all you got is a v-band clamp whereas this other turbo had an o-ring in the housing and it's really tough to put them together this way so i can put this uh compressor housing on then i can slide the cartridge in 
and uh, orient it for the oil lines, snug it up, then put the exhaust housing on. Yeah, that ain't never gonna work, is it? Mm -mm. No, sir. Then I have to customize the drain tube or something. Shit. Oh, man. So we gotta turn it like that. Okay, I got the switchblade turbo on the cat. I had to. Uh, cut the oil return line right there. I only had to take about an eighth of an inch out of it. To get it to hook back up. <clears throat> so I've got everything bolted down and it's fitting. The only problem is I really screwed up and uh, I broke this ear off trying to horse this pipe around. So now I've got to take this pipe back out and weld this. Okay, how'd I do? Be honest. Haven't brazed for eons. I think that'll stick though. I cleaned it up good. So we'll let her cool. See how she turns out. And then I've got to get an oil line. Uh, probably the one I put on the C15 will probably work put on this and then bring it down and then adapt it into this uh, filter housing. Fifteen freight page. It's fifteen six page. Okay, now I want to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, this is the turbocharger oil line that I bought for the C15, the same one. It's actually for a 6NZ series, single turbo. And it had this end on it like this, and the end was pointed this way. So there was no way I could get it up there. So I went down to my cat dealer, talked to the hose guy, we cut this end off, which is a, this one is a, a number 10 O-ring face boss, and I didn't want that. So he was kind enough to crimp on a number 10 JIC. So I just need to run it in the shop and blow through it and make sure it's clean before I put it on. So I'll go do that, and then we'll be back and put this baby on. Okay, I've, uh, I've already put some oil in the turbo to pre-lube it because it's been sitting for so many months on the bench. I think that's a good idea to give it a little squirt. 
And I went in the shop and I took the air gun and I blew the heck out of this line to make sure there was no pieces, parts, because you do not want crap going through that turbo, through those bearings. Absolutely no metal, no nothing. It's one place you want it to be operating room sterile. At least that's my thought. What's yours? I like to be clean. I just do. Okay, now we gotta hook this other end up. Let's see how that goes. Can you see it? I think you can right there. Woo, look at that. I don't know, that's going to be a little short. Oh, hope that's going to work. You know what? I need to... I might have to bend that down a little to get just a little bit more length. Yeah, that's going to work. Excellent. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you couldn't ask for better, could you? Don't think you could. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. There we go. All right. Awesome. Look at that. Looks like chrome and everything. Okay, uh, blew the fan or the compressor belt on the Kenworth and chewed up the other one. So, done for the day. So. I couldn't find a belt to save my butt here in BFE Blackfoot. Kenworth didn't have it. Peterbilt didn't have it. Freightliner didn't have it. Keyline Automotive Warehouse didn't have it. Napa, clear up and down the valley, didn't have it. Fleet Pride never called me back. So Kenworth's going to have me two new sets in out of Salt Lake in the morning. So we can go move our rented roller out to the job. Um... So I'm back to working on this. I want to show you this. See, this is the old style cat manifolds. Now, they they haven't used a bypass in these cats since like 1960, 150s. They had old bypass valves on them. But they continue to make the manifold with this hole in it. But the elbows don't have a hole. So, I got to get the elbow on there, and I got to get this big old gasket in there. And I'm hoping it fits, because under this one, I've just got the thin gasket like you'd use on a truck. Because the normal gasket looks like this one, and it doesn't have the, the split in here. Because, see, this is a split manifold. See, because this manifold will run the old T1810 that was a wide open housing, or it will run a new style with the split housing. They're more efficient. So I'm hoping that I can get this lined up. So that's what we're going to do next is get this elbow on. And then I think we're ready to start her up. <laughs> Alright boys and girls, are you ready? Are you ready for some turbo?
Okay, uh, she's pumping about 18 pounds of boost at full converter stall, which is 1,050 RPM. So what I'm going to do is get the compressor maps from Jim for this turbo and for the T1810 and show you the difference in the uh, uh, pounds per air per minute that this turbo pumps versus the T1810. And like I told you before in my C15 switchblade videos, uh, pressure and volume are not linear. So even though we're pumping about 18 pounds of boost at full stall, and with the T1810 we were probably not even 15, uh, the amount of air that this turbo will pump uh, versus the T1810 is hugely different so when when I get pushing dirt we would probably be in the 20 psi department 20 who knows take a guess because you're gonna have a little more engine rpm but one of the cool things I noticed is it's doing exactly what Jim said it would do the torque rise on this is absolutely incredible compared to that old turbo and the smoke is half over half less the what it was originally when you would accelerate before that smoke was so black and so thick coming out of that turbo you couldn't see through it and now what little bit of smoke is there you can literally see through it I'll bet I could get rid of a lot more of that smoke because the torque rise is so fast if I adjust the air fuel ratio I bet I could get rid of all of that smoke but I'm not going to do that until I take it out and do some dozing with it and show you the black smoke because I've got lots of old video of the smoke with the T1810. When I get it in the shop, uh, put the new head gaskets on, do the valve job, I need to overhaul the governor and reseal a bunch of stuff over there. I will do all that and then we'll go out and adjust that air fuel ratio. Now I know everybody loves smoke and that's cool, but smoke is soot in the oil which grinds up the engine. And at $20 a gallon for oil, yep, that's right, Dell 400 I am now paying $20 a gallon for, for a straight 30 weight. So at 20 bucks a gallon for oil, I can't afford to let it run on the ground. And if I can do some engine oil sampling, which I'm going to do, if I can extend my drain interval past that 250-hour mark, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sample, and when they tell me it's time to change, I'm going to see how many hours we put on it and then change it. So potentially the fuel savings, the wear and tear on the engine, and the oil change intervals this turbo should pay for itself in a short amount of time so it did everything Jim said it was gonna do so can't wait to get the hood on and the dozer back on and go to work 